The minute I heard Cassie's the lawsuit, I knew it was true. The entire thing, there's not one thing that I doubted. You teach people that if somebody is smaller than you and you can control them, you use violence. This man has always built people and broke them down. That's what we've seen. Men who are abusive, who aren't as abusive, quote unquote, as Diddy, they use the Diddy situation to basically make themselves look good. Because every time we see it, every now and then, people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. I don't think people, it's not that people can't believe it. I think it's the fact that now we're seeing it on a grand scale. The men that aspire to that power, the idea that that man can also be held responsible ruins their entire understanding of what they're aspiring to. beautiful black people let me tell you why i've convened you here today Shalom. we are doing our follow-up episode to the diddy deep dive this one now on the heels of the footage from a hotel incident from years ago that obviously the hotel buried for diddy um but the footage came out showing Diddy brutally assaulting Cassie. She, it seems like she's trying to get away. She's at the elevator. He comes running out in his towel and he begins kicking her and beating her and dragging her, which by the way, are allegations that I'm pretty sure she had alleged. She referenced this hotel incident before and that footage was something she mm -hmm. would need had the case um, went on. And, what I think, before I hand the wheels over to y'all, the thing I'm going to comment on is Diddy released an apology video after where he goes, oh, I was at my lowest. I am working on being a better man and blah, 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 and all this bullshit. Something right? about and Jesus. Me, and let me tell <laughs> you, it's not like even God. like, it's, this isn't even like the innate slander of like an apology video or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. No, specifically, let me say why this one is bullshit. Diddy came, even after he settled his lawsuit with Cassie, he settled that lawsuit within less than 24 hours. He still went mm -hmm. out of his way to put out a statement saying they absolutely deny any of these allegations, right? He then went on to proceed. To, he literally, as he put out the apology video, his pins tweet, his pinned tweet was still, oh, this is a smear campaign. With, I, can't, I can't sit back and, and while people continue to lie on me and disparage me and drag my name and this, this is the next thing. So there's literally no fucking way that you are a man that recognize that you are at your lowest or you did something wrong and you've been trying to work to be a better man or take accountability literally cannot be fucking true because according to you you are already the best man and niggas was lying on your fucking name so right. to y'all fuck I you so many that's all i gotta start that's, with that <laughs> first off fuck him and everything he stands for i personally went over told Amy, I was like, can I have an opinion on this? Because I've been keeping up with like every, I don't know why, but particularly this particular case has me like laser eye focus and I'm keeping up with like everything to catch a lie <laughs> at all. But from like a, obviously he's full of shit because it's just pretty obvious that he's full of shit. But the thing that I find fascinating is like, what was the idea behind issuing the apology who was it to? Because he doesn't mention Cassie, for instance. He doesn't mention who he's actually apologizing to. So I'm assuming that it's primarily a PR stunt or a PR trying to, uh, you know, stop any damages or whatnot. But with an ongoing federal investigation and now you're essentially admitting to the violence that you've been alleged, I just feel like this is a really bad idea just from like a PR perspective point and also you're a terrible fucking person and i'm happy that everyone sees it now so that's i just yeah. i, I just want to add that i believe part of the settlement with cassie was that neither one of them could speak on each other in public anymore going forward so mm -hmm. i guess that's why she hasn't really made a statement towards him or towards anything and he didn't say anything i do want to say diddy was to me one of the most prominent hip hop icons ever. And the minute I heard Cassie's, the minute I read the lawsuit, uh, I knew it was true. There was no, there was nothing about it that, mm -hmm. there was not one thing that I doubted along the entire thing. There's not one thing that I doubted. And yet and still, I was shocked when I saw this video. Yeah. The mm -hmm. level of arrogance the level the level of not abuse is one thing and not to put that aside 
but it was almost as if she wasn't a human being. It was scary. It was almost as if there was no love. It was sheer control, sheer arrogance, sheer blatant disregard for a person that you show called love. And at that moment, I understood everything that wasn't said in those papers. Mm. At that moment, I saw him as somebody I just... I read the papers and I still thought, okay, Diddy was, he's freaky or he's, you know, maybe he was just abusive. And I don't even know what just abusive is, but I didn't expect that. And then now I had to reconsider everything that I thought I knew about this person. Every single thing. It was like, so you knew he was arrogant. You saw, I worked on making the band. I worked beside him. Oh, wow. Mm. I've seen the way he's treated people. And I took it as, that's just Diddy. Mm. I've seen the way he's acted on television. I've seen the way he's acted uh, on, on, you know, say The Four or whatever those shows that he was on. And I'm like, all right, he's just in character. This is Mm. his character. I had Mm. no idea. Even with her saying this, and you guys can definitely speak on that about people who don't believe it when it's being said that it was to this level. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. So I didn't, I wasn't shocked by the video at all, like, or, or, or the violence that we were seeing in the video. And that's mm-hmm. maybe because for me, I had a, I had a, my boyfriend in college was just 10 years ago. Now, April, 2014, uh, attacked me, like tried, like, and he kicked me in my head more than 30 times, like 36 is how much I remember counting. And I remember getting a concussion. And I think the thing that when I see the Diddy video and I think about my own experience and what I want to make sure we really parse out and we don't do is when we do see these incidents, right? Like when we see when on the occasion where we're able to see the kind of allegations that so many women, so many people, because not just women are abused, um, uh, allege right like these are right these are experiences that lots of people are happening which means that every man is not the boogeyman right it's not like this how did it happen like this like mm-hmm. special like Diddy is not some like exceptional monster that we don't know how we got there Diddy is the result is the result of exactly what we're breeding in society right because there's a reason why there is a normalcy obviously we know with abuse for as much as like allegations are something that are theoretically treated like the boogeyman Mm -hmm. like something people are avoid because it's going to end you or whatever in real life we know that it doesn't end people every day right like it is very normal we can think of lots of different hip-hop icons that we know of abuse allegations or we know confirmed solidified abuse right like a dr dre all these different people that are going to get uh, awards and all these things so how it's happening is the result of this kind of reason why it's so normal to us or it can keep going on and is because we know on some level that how it is that we normalize or we encourage men to be or breeds for this, right? Like if you live in a world where you, it's okay for us to know that a Diddy is exploitative or is abusive or in the way that his arrogance or his ego, we recognize on so many levels that a man being considered powerful or successful or rich becomes like a pass or something that we Mm. think is normal for them to be in, to act out all these other things that are consistent with someone who was then going to go and to be violent right like so I think that is what I think is important and I don't say that like from a condemnation standpoint I think like at the end of the day that abuse and domestic violence is obviously regular like commonplace it's happening Mm -hmm. commonplace in our society which means we don't have the ability to just round up it's not like some special pill that only the abusers have there's something that we are teaching Mm -hmm. and we are fostering Mm -hmm. in our society that allows for that and if we keep treating it like these men when we find out about it are these boogeymen that we just get rid of or we don't know what to do then it becomes just like expanding the the prison the prison system and this and next thing but nothing actually gets done for how do we deal with the men and the boys that are in our community and the people and not just them because obviously Obviously, uh, little boys, lots of little, little black boys are abused by grown ass women, all these different things, too. Right. So there's a whole shebang to this. But I'm like, how do we address what what how we actually got there? Right? I didn't think like Diddy Diddy didn't come out of nowhere. R. Kelly didn't come out of nowhere. Like Russell, Russell, um, Brand. your boy, Russell Simmons didn't just come out of nowhere. Right. All these men no, are not just, the white man. Nowhere. Yeah, listen. I feel like, um, and Russell Brand, but um, I feel like also we can talk about it being Diddy. I have this really 
great shirt that has Diddy and um, uh, Biggie on it. It's great. It's the, you know, the culture, for the culture type of stuff, right? And I, I love what Diddy brought to the culture, what we know him to be, um, you know, it, with making the band. Even in those times, I knew, to me, having the, them to go get cheesecake, speaking to the girls of Danny Decay in a certain type of way. Uh, I saw all of this as this man, like uses his power and he mm. acts as the boogeyman and so scary, but we love what he creates. We, we can't lie. We like to, when I be in the club and they be playing music, I play around and do the diddy bop, you know, we do all of that. So, but I'm like, this man has done for the first group that he made. What are the, what are the names? Fatty Koo. We never seen nothing come of that. Mm. Never nothing and nothing at all. This man has always built people and broke them down. That's what we've seen um, from, you know, his presence um, on television. Consistently. Yes, consistently. Um, we even seen him talk to his colleagues like that. Um, mm. The boom cat lady and you know how they fell out and all this stuff. He has a lot of stories or other people have a lot of stories of falling out with him. And we've seen some of it um, on television play out. But I say the this, this man, after um, Cassie put out all this information, right? Uh, a lot of people instantly went to, she want money. She want this and that. And yes, like you said, Ole, um, to have settled immediately the next day, we know something was fishy. But the, she put in those documents to the T, details, right? Uh, and um, we look at that footage and it's, it's down to the T, walking us through it. And because she said it immediately, it's better to say another black man, why are we speaking against another black man? Why are we doing that? Why, why aren't we, um, you know, uh, uh, innocent until proven guilty. Then the video comes out and the people who were, who are rappers and celebrities, some of them who chose to speak up in favor of Diddy. Now their videos are, um, you know, I'm still going to stick with innocent until proven guilty, you know, sorry to Cassie, um, hated to see what happened, you know, uh, so, but it's like, no, does, we don't need that, that type of What does guilty because, mean in that context? In the court of law, in the court of law, not <laughs> only. Because, okay. <laughs> and then he himself said that, um, put um, a statement out as well, um, right hmm. before that said, you know, uh, he denounced all the allegations. He denied them. He said, none of this is true, and you guys will see. Well, yet we're looking at it. We we're saw. looking at it now. I Does think it, what, it, 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 what, like, concerns me is that, or I, it wasn't surprising. I agree. It wasn't surprising. The actual violence was shocking to me. And I, what I think a lot of people shock is the fact that there's footage showing mm. that type of violence. Because every time we see it, every now and then, people are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening. I don't think people, it's not that people can't believe it. I think it's the fact that now we're seeing it on a grand scale. It's kind of like when we started seeing um, police brutality on video. Like everybody knew that's what mm. police were doing, but seeing it, you can't gaslight it anymore. And like, a part of my concern with it is I don't want society to kind of like, do this reality televisation of it where it's like now we gotta see mm. like this crazy um footage of it because i'm watching i'm watching it you know similar to ula i'm thinking like it reminds me of, of a situation i've been in like that type of violence is not something that is is unknown to me and not unknown to a yeah. lot of women i'm thinking mm -hmm. damn what if my shit was like uh, like on a screen like this and everyone were, were to see it that's what was triggering me about it but people are still like does it have to get to the point of like now we have to see this footage of this yes. grown man treating a woman like a dog the, the thing oh, is it yeah. won't make a difference uh, i it won't make a difference regardless because in the same way that we've been watching yes when people first started seeing the videos on social media police brutality is like oh my god outrage and then it continues to happen and then it continues to happen and then it becomes normal and the system the system doesn't respond it doesn't change because what people always fail to remember is that the awareness is not for the system the video is not for is not for the system the system knew the system already seen it the videos are not new to the system the system don't give a fuck the videos and the stuff are for you and still the same way that people respond to incidents where they watch police murder black people and they go oh well what did they do and they start trying to vilify them it's this exact thing you see the discussions i clicked on no jumper for like two seconds the other day and these motherfuckers were on there talking about um were on there talking about oh did he get dog piled and oh everybody jumping on it and this and that the next thing and you know what i realized so something rebecca said um 
about like people at this rock as like they love what a diddy creates i don't mm. even think it's that people love what a diddy creates they love what a diddy has he represents and its power because so often we will know we know what is central to a diddy story is just how much of diddy's success is owed to artists that we know he leaves penniless that he takes from all kinds of people right that have worked with them and told these stories and that is known we fucking know that like documented the Diddy curse, all these artists that will talk about it. So it's obviously not about what Diddy truly creates or what his inherent value is, but it's the power. People people admire and they worship this like this idea that someone can get to a place where they are unstoppable or whatever have you. That's why whenever you see these happens to like Diddy's or Bill Cosby or whoever, people are like, oh, they want to get another powerful black man. They want to get another powerful black man. And it's funny, right? Like in the same breath that they're infantilizing this person like a victim that needs to be helped and protected is also what they are talking about in law them for is being powerful right and so much mm. and if you truly if you are in awe of power if power is something you aspire <clears throat> to and you like it so much of course that it allows you to like a figure that you know exploits his artists exploits his friends hurts people that you've heard in association with all these things for decades yeah you're gonna that is going to foster a society that even even still when they finally see yes the violence or whatever have you we have become accustomed as a culture as a community as a society as a society to walk past these things to to somehow act like we're not sure about things that evidence has been out for that things are confirmed we do it all of the time like again i just watch dr dre get an honorary grammy a gra or a new award named mm -hmm. after the man right like this is man still in the super bowl this is the next thing meanwhile i follow d barnes you know what i mean like in real life we know this we know the michelle story we know d barnes story. we fucking know that and these artists move on and they continue to be celebrated right like nobody gives a fuck about how eminem and whoever else was there like totally fine with the abuse that dr dre was doing to these women and we continue to like love and celebrate them in a culture so are we not like clearly what it's really about is we like where we like the idea of where someone can get to that they can't be checked yeah mm -hmm. i was gonna uh talk about <clears throat> um so at the root, like you said, at the root of abusive relationships, it's, it's all about power. It's about who the trying to the police trying to lock one of y'all. That's yep yeah, over here. That's Kenny. <laughs> Look at NYPD. Yeah. You see Eric Adams? <laughs> we here for three seconds, and they were like, "Come closer, cool, Pierre, so we can hear you." <laughs> <laughs> Pierre, come closer to the mic so we can hear you. Oh, yeah. sorry about that. Now I was saying, like, yeah, the root of abusive relationships is power. It's about a person wanting to have power over the other person. Um, and because I work in the field of domestic violence, the video coming out wasn't surprising to me either, because that's the stories we hear a lot from survivors. Um, and like, like you guys mentioned, the, the boogeyman, because when videos like this come out, um, men who are abusive, who aren't as abusive, quote unquote, as Diddy, they use the Diddy situation to basically make themselves look good. Right. So like, as long yeah. as I'm not doing what Diddy's doing to Cassie or Diddy does to other people, you, I'm not that bad of a guy. You can accept me, you know, for not being as bad as Diddy. That's why... When these videos come out, as much as like they can be helpful for people to realize that this person was abusive this whole time, people who are who are abusers, who are emotionally, uh, physic, uh, emotionally, uh, mentally, uh, verbally abusive, can use that as a shield to protect themselves from being held accountable as well, right? Mm. So yeah, I think that that's one of the things with that video came out because people are not using this video to trying to say that abuse can only look this particular kind of way. Even though we know of the, the verbal harassment he's done towards uh, other people, we know how he's stolen money, like financial abuse of other people. People now take this one instance of what he did as like the only thing he's done. When we know it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a history of him harming people um, in his life, people in his circle. Well, how do how we do even get there? Go, go, well, Kenny, go, go, go. I was going to say like kind of combining what Pierre and Olayemi said, I've always found it fascinating the men that kind of, usually men that kind of fall on the sword for when a power for man is being scrutinized rightfully for obviously abusive behavior. <sighs> I, I kind of read it as like the men that aspire to that power, the idea that that man can also be held responsible ruins their entire understanding of what they're aspiring to because yeah. they're aspiring to not be checked, to be able to um, commit sexual violence, physical violence, emotional violence with impunity. Um, and I feel like a lot of times it's wrapped into masculinity and like I am the the ultimate man if I can do these things um which was also I was kind of talking to Olemi before we got started I was kind of curious though of course there are people that 
are still defending Diddy because there's always going to be people that do. I do find in comparison to other men who have been um, even before the, the video came out and maybe I have like a warped perception just because of the people that I follow on my algorithm and whatnot. But I didn't see this like influx of men really falling on the sword the same way that they may for another abusive man. And I, and I was kind of curious if maybe there was some like some element of homophobia, particularly in regards to him, because there's these ideas that he had also victimized men. Um, and at that point, it, <laughs> me and my friend have a joke like, I love Black people, but we have a problem with prioritizing sometimes because people... One, one people of the things I... Oh, my bad. I go, yeah. go, 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 go. No, no, no. Go ahead. You're probably going to answer. Yeah. I was going to say, one of the things I worked on... Um, in my master's thesis, I talked about like sexual violence and there's this idea mm. of like the authentic victim. And mm. if the, and people not understanding of someone can be a victim unless they look like this type of archetype. Um, mm. I think a part of like who Cassie is, I think that also plays into it because if you look at like kind of how Meg the Stallion is more masculine or not masculinized and there was people who was falling into a Tory Lane's little bitch ass. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I almost said a lot more, but compared to like, you know, Cassie, um, and like her ambiguity. And I think there's like an aspect of that definitely. Um, and then the homophobia, right. And now you have, you have men that are like victimized by him and other, those men are like other rappers that people like, like Meek Mill. Um, and now Meek Mill, you, you make Meek Mill come out looking like he's gay. And like, that is what the focus went on. So it's like, right no diddy some yeah you know and like so sometimes it's so frustrating too yeah. it's like we are here with oh, abuse I... and you're focused on whether or not someone may or may not be gay like god who cares yeah <laughs> like, all right i think, I think so, when the allegations first came out like late last year that's what the tweets were about because people were also questioning oh how come a lot of men aren't coming forward and saying anything about diddy and mm. some men will respond like, oh, we don't we don't care about Diddy. Like, we stop caring about Diddy. And it, they'll say some kind of thing about, like, how he's messing with men, whatever it is, or how he, they know how he moves or whatever it is. It's like, so your issue isn't the sexual violence <laughs> no. that he's committing towards multiple people, but the fact that he might be queer. You know, yeah, and the right. thing about it is, too, like, um, back to, like, well, like, when it comes to violence, it's all about power. He might not mm. even be gay, but the fact that he can have power over people by using sexual violence is what he's going to do. His power goes so deep, right? He's one of those people. Mm -hmm. We can just use Diddy, for example, just Diddy alone. Like, just how um, he goes, he can change his name up, change his persona, um, say that he's healed, he attach himself, just like Kanye did. I think we talked about this in one of these videos. Just like Kanye did when he needed somewhere to lay his head when the world was t saying that he was too much, when, pe when he believed that he was being rejected. So... Now he, um, the latest thing that Diddy did was attach himself to the church, change himself yes. to the, yep. um, the, change his name to love, right? Went over to T.D. Jakes and him and then changed his name to love. And for me, uh, it goes, it plays into my perspective. It plays into that sick power move because love... Going to the church is already sketchy enough when you know you ain't no good and you know you're just going over there, over there to let people think that you, you know, you're in a godly place and to be accepted and, and forgiven by these people. Yes, that's what And yeah, so that's to have the name love for me, because in love, biblically, uh, God is love. I believe that Diddy believes that he's God and he can literally just do anything to anybody and get away with it. We know this mm -hmm. from him thinking that paying that who the hotel off that what 50 plus grand or whatever it was, it was going to disappear. But baby, come on now. Here it is for such a time as this. So that the mm -hmm. act of, of abusers going to church to, you know, gain like some kind of shield from accountability is an aspect of spiritual abuse. Mm -hmm. Um because in the church community, the whole idea of church is forgiveness, mm -hmm. right? So if the church forgives me and you guys aren't forgiving me, you guys saying the church is wrong? Then the, yeah. and, the, and that there's no work that comes with it, right? Like there's something, I, you know, funny, I was watching this docu-series on Netflix right now about Ashley Madison, about the Ashley Madison I just candle. watched it. Oh, you it's me so candy. good. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> right? It's about, there used to be this, uh, well, there still exists, this website for this dating website for cheaters, right? Like people mm -hmm. knowingly signing up to cheat on their spouses, right? And then there was this big, huge data leak where all their business got out because the, the hacker decided, fuck this, right? Um, there was a couple there 
talking about the husband had been on the website, had been cheating on his woman, on his wife and all this. And then when he like, you know, he lies to her, they do this like YouTube video because they're Christians. And he's like, he's like, yep. So God is, yes, I, it's true. I was in late, but God, I, I spoke to God and God has forgiven me. So that's all there is to it. You know what I mean? And that, and that's what, that's what it is. Like in their mind, like if you even see on that apology video from Diddy, all these comments from, Oh my God, you see like Kelly Price and people letting you down and shit like in the comments, like quoting scripture and this, 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 and the next thing. And it's, 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 it's crazy, right? Because this is something I'm really struggling with and trying to, I feel like I try to walk this like balancing act, right? Of like, mm -hmm. I believe that it's, <clears throat> I believe that it's a dangerous attitude to have that, like, especially with things that I believe our society actively fosters. And I believe that our society is create, creates the rape culture, the violence, the patriarch, patriarchal mm -hmm. violence and the things that we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. These are not things just happening because they're just boogeyman men. These are the tools that are happening. And I think in order for us to actually co correct that, we have to address problems rather than like, like condemnation of people. But that being mm -hmm. said, that can be a fine line between where that and you see this like I and I feel like I've been seeing a lot more rise in conversations about like Gen X black women that mm. want to get the blanket out to, to, yeah. to cover and protect and conceal you know what I mean all of these men that have been abusive and I think like it's like you go so far and I'm somebody who's incredibly some like I'm a I've, I've experienced domestic violence I'm also a defense attorney so I have I represented tons of men like especially black men accused of crimes even accused of domestic violence and stuff so I have this like I want us to I understand, I understand recognizing rec or recognizing this world that we're in or how much harder the world can be on black men versus other men and wanting to do these things. But I, I fear that sometimes we go so, we go so far to be empathetic towards the black man that we entirely forsake the black woman, right? Like, mm -hmm. because I'm yeah. like in, in the breath that you want to, you know, protect, uh, or you want, or you don't want to see a ditty destroyed or whatever the fuck they come up with you know in the breath that you don't do you care about all of the women and the people and the men and all these people that have been harmed right like do you care like when you when you still want to appreciate what dr dre has done or whatever so you don't care that this is a man who would violate like have you read the d barnes like what what the heard d barnes tell that story like what happened or these things like that I we remember. so i don't know i really i really don't know and i'm i'm um, i'm struggling with I must say, trying to Tahoe. I must say it's kind of difficult for me to 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 experience all of this. For one, um and I have been in an abusive relationship. I was abusive uh at a point in my life. I had no idea uh I don't even if when you're in that I don't even think that you see regularly. I don't even think you see humanity. I don't, I called her yesterday and I asked her and she was like, yeah, we were just angry. And I was like, was it me? It was, was it you? And she was like, it was us. It was just the way we were. Like we, that was just the way we communicated. And when y'all are saying the video and men not really knowing whether it was true or not, do y'all think that it's because they've experienced this before in their relationships, but it just didn't look like that? Yeah. So, yes. so uh, mm -hmm. from what yes. I know, in my, my particular work, uh, the violence is a learned behavior, right? So if I, a lot of it, a lot of people who are- And that, that, uh, pardon me, Pia, I'm sorry to cut you off, but please yeah. stay right there. When I was talking to my therapist about it, years ago, she was like, well, you were beaten a lot when you was a kid. You, that's something that you learned and that's something that you applied. And I promise you, I am not trying to make no excuses f for my behavior. Like, uh, I've, I've continuously stood on fighting against that, protecting women, protecting every woman in my woman in my life, uh, strangers, everybody. I speak on it continuously, but it being a learned behavior, like that's really a thing that can happen for, to you, like when you're young. Am I right? Yeah. I I, I want to take a second to point out per, like what Tahoe did, which I think is great, and what you want to see, like, um, because I saw what, what, what Joe Budden recently had come out finally, like saying something about Diddy, and he was like mask, like condemning Diddy, right? And people on social media, like, 
um, not you, right? Like not you who mm-hmm. has allegations mm-hmm. of abuse, right? And then you see people who want who were defending, you know, Joe Budden by being like, y'all wanted him to talk about this, and now y'all are mad at him for talking about this. And it's like there's a specific way that people want you to do something. I think we live in a society that says, and I think the reason why you see so men, so many men who maybe have been in situations like this or whatever, and un- were unwilling to concede to this or admit this or recognize it is because we live in a society that when it's like when you tell white people that yes you will have internalized racism you will have or they did something racist what they hear is you think i'm a bad person who consciously chose to be racist and that's not what you're saying right it's like you can do bad things you can believe in bad things you can have bad ways that you respond to 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 life or bad ways that you handle things and it doesn't mean you're a bad person or that there's no redemption for you but it does mean that you have to acknowledge that right so the way that you speak about something if you've done something or you've experienced it there are lots of i am not someone that's of the mindset that you are everybody is to be discarded or whatever like I live in a real world in a real society where I know a lot of different people who have done and been through a lot of different things and they are not as what they are not their worst deed right but it's about what you do after so, so you what, what Tahoe did is what people would have reasonably wanted uh Joe Budden like theoretically this isn't me even commenting on the situation I ain't getting in that I don't want to be in their part of their verse but what people mm-hmm. would have wanted from a Joe Budden what you could what accountability would really look like would be to say I have been in an abusive relationship I have been abusive I have done things and this is me realizing why that has why that's fucked up, how that's fucked up, how I've tried to like reconcile that. That's what's wanted, that's what's needed, that's what accountability actually yeah. looks like. Not also, just like yeah. I also yeah. wanna say I'm not trying to make any excuses for my upbringing or nothing. Like these is conscious decisions. I had no idea who I was, what I was doing. I just didn't I didn't know no better. I was a fucking idiot. And I learned from watching other people. I saw my moms be abused. I remember opening the door and seeing her fighting a guy. And she told me to go back in the room. And I saw my friends, my older friends, they doing it with their girlfriends. And I don't know, maybe it imprinted on me. Maybe I just didn't understand. It did. Like yeah, anything. It, like, I just it, imprint, didn't, it I did imprint on you. And I, I did. just didn't know, you know? Like, yeah, yes, Christina. My, I have the, the, this, this way of how like society looks at romantic relationships. And they do, we do this like, oh, that's not my business, that's not my business, really irks me because I really think that there needs to be like community within romantic relationships um, because that's where you hold the accountability. And romantic mm-hmm. relationships are embedded with all the bullshit that we're being oppressed and marginalized by anyways. It absolutely gets imprinted on us. It absolutely is something that we need to be like deconstruct. And I think like it has been frustrating for so many years and decades because it's women will be like, or people will be like, I, we, I'll, I'll use women for right now. Um, but just to say that I know it's not just women who are abused. We'll be like, we all know a woman who's gone through some type of sexual assault or violence, but then the other way around, it'd be like, oh, niggas don't know any other nigga who's done that. And it's like, mm, you've got to know there's there's two sides to it. And there's, I think, see, speaking from my perspective as someone who's been a victim in a domestic violence situation, I knew exactly what my abuser went through and how he got that. I saw his parents. I saw how his stepdad treated him. That And it was actually that compassion and empathy that had me staying longer than mm-hmm. I should have because I was like, oh my God, this isn't his fault. Oh my God, this isn't his fault. Well, we're trying to go to therapy. Well, he might have BPD. Well, he's taking off his meds and he did it out until I found myself on the floor like Cassie, like, oh my God. And the only way that I got like out of that was it was in front of someone and she I was apologizing to her like I'm sorry you had to see that and she said the words to me I'm glad I was there because if you did that in front of me I don't know what he would have done without me there and I had to realize I can't even confidently be like I would have survived that night you, so it's you, it's a constant finding of the line just real quick of like understanding that it's we, we know R. Kelly was, was sexually abused as a child we know Chris Brown saw his mom um be, be abused but what when it, you become like a danger, it's like, what what do we do with that? Because now it's like, well, you're yeah. actively dangerous, you know, well, not say, you, but regular you. What I was going to say, like the, the learned behavior part is that um, even acts of abuse is intentional because it's an action you're choosing to do it. It's just that when you saw it happening, there was no consequences when you saw it happening. Like no one called, like the person that abused your mom didn't get, didn't go to jail probably, right? Your mm-hmm. homeboy beating up his girlfriend didn't go to jail. So in your mind, I can do this thing and not be held accountable for it. 
You know what I mean? So like, yeah. it, it's, it's like a psychological psychological which, thing where like, in, which, in my mind, I can cause harm without being held accountable. It becomes an which option, is, yeah. but which you think it really too. exists. Right. But I'm here's sorry, what you're gonna say. I feel like our society and our community like lives in one where you can punish for something criminally and that doesn't mean that people think it's wrong, right? Like cheating is like, and I think that's important there, like secretly among themselves, not the opinion that they can express. I have sat across from men and like had, I, again, I'm a defense attorney and I've had the, the deep conversation in this and I, some people genuinely do not see what's wrong with it. Like their understanding of how they've been raised. Like I live, I'm from the Bahamas. The Bahamas is constitutionally Christian, right? And what that means is a whole lot of misogynistic fuck shit is the law. Like marital rape is a thing that is regularly debated on our, in our parliamentary floor. It's not illegal. And the reason, and, and Bahamans, the smartest, kindest Bahamans, you know, a man, whatever, will be there arguing you down why marital because they, their idea their literal thought process as informed to them by the bible or however is that this is a woman's duty duty they literally don't see you as the ability to have that boundary to have that consent it's not that they're setting out in their mind they think they're a boogeyman or whatever they're being educated and raised to believe in things that foster an abuse you know um and so something Christina said that's beautiful about when we talk about community and needing community and relationships, there also needs to be community accountability, like in the sense, and let me say what I mean about accountability. Like whenever a person, a, a man or a woman or whoever is an abuser, everybody acts like they just came out of nowhere. It's even this mm. thing, something I, you know, I, I recognize from my childhood that I see is that when I was a kid, I used to know all these parents, like my friends, but my my parents talking about um, their friends or their friends par f talking about about like another person's kids, like they're like this anomaly, like oh that person just ended up with a fucked up child, they did everything right and blah blah blah. As an adult person, every single fucking child and that I know is a, a direct extension of their circumstance, their parents, their circumstance. Their friends, none of them are anomalies, none of them. Like every time you see it, you know exactly what. Like there's more to life and who people become than. Their their rent was paid or they have two parents or whatever mm -hmm. it's what you teach people is what you believe in and how i could really give you an example of that right so to, to people acting brand new i remember my college boyfriend was, who abused me who attacked me before he ever physically attacked me I remember us being in the mall and his him and his mummy getting it in the food court, him and his mummy getting into it, like getting into it. And she jumped up and ran and took off. And I ran behind her like, oh, come on. And she was like, she was like, she was like, he's looking at me like he wants to well, white lady. He was mixed. He was black. But, you know, his, his mama was white. Uh, and she was like, he's looking at me like he wants to beat my ass. Like, like she was like, you need to determine if that's someone you will be with, right? So he's, she's his mother and she recognized him as a fucking physical threat. And I want to remind you that I'd put a pin in that or whatever for a year later. So the night my college boyfriend attacked me, he, first of all, he had been like fighting. We had been at uh, my sorority and his fraternity had thrown like a joint party, right? And he had just crossed. And the only reason he even crossed, he even pledged, was because he felt jealous of my relationship with like uh, niggas in the Greek community, right? So he starts fighting with the, the, the Kappas. He was a Sigma. He starts fighting with the Kappas who come there because I used to talk to the Kappas. So now we hate the Kappas, right? So at this point, I know he ain't wrapped too tight. I've been living with him. I don't think he's ever going to be a physical threat because at the time, I was like 20, like 2019. I didn't see, I didn't know the cycles of abuse like years mm. later once i seen them i realized like oh very clearly like oh isolated me like immediately got together and he's like oh quit being an ra like so give up your school housing come move with me off campus where the only person the only way for me to get around was for him to drive me to and from i couldn't talk to my male friends so he was doing all these crazy things like building up the but while he's doing it like manipulating me he's like always being like oh i would never hit you i would never or, like always like talking down on men that like are physically abusive or men that cheat so i think these things would just never happen and i think all this like emotional possessive jealousness is like you know love oh he loved me mm -hmm. right cool but now i see why i should have seen it but that night he starts um he gets into it with all with all the kappas i like uh calm everybody down like hey please like don't be my boyfriend up like i y'all i understand da, 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 da. he goes out of nowhere he comes back to the, to the club with like a paddle he got out the back trunk to run a fight with them i'm like y'all please don't beat my nigga up like right 
And so then me and my sorority sister are trying to like drag him down the street. As we're dragging him down the street, he sees like he sees like a Kappa sitting down in Wendy's minding his own business, eating his food. He gets upset. He want to go into Wendy's to fight. So we're like pu- like pulling him out. My sorority sister is trying to like stop him. But how it looks, he's getting so buck with her on the street. It looks to the police like he is. Um, it looks to the police like he is like arguing with her, fighting to the police. The police stopped to ask him, like, they're like to ask us, oh, is everything okay? And I want y'all to understand, y'all know how I feel about the police. Y'all know (laughs) how I feel about the police. So if I tell you the police are not wrong, there was no racial profiling or anything (laughs) happening in the story, you know it didn't, like, y'all, the police are just like, hey, what's going on? Everybody else sobers up when they see the police. It's 20, like, like, you know what I mean? Oh, da da not this nigga. Me and, and we're 20, right? Like, we're not even 21. So me and um, my friend are like, oh, it's okay. And he's like, fuck that. Fuck this. Da, 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 da. So the police are like, all right, arrest him, right? So they go to put him in the car. I spend 20 minutes convincing the police to let him go. Like, hey, blah, blah, blah. If you just give me the key, I'll take him home. This is the next thing. And they're like, if you could just get him to apologize, if you got him to apologize, we'll let, we'll let you take him, which is crazy, by the way, like talking to nigga out of handcuffs, right? And so I go after like 20 minutes, I convince the police. Then I got to spend another 15 minutes convincing him to um to to just apologize to them. He's like, no, fuck that. They racially profiling me, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Okay, baby, yeah, but let's talk about that when we get home. Like, you know, let me, like, let's talk, let's just say this now so you don't get arrested. You don't go to jail, right? So I finally get him to get, say sorry. They give me the keys because he's drunk. The minute we get out the car, he takes off down the hill, right? Like, I'm walking behind him, like, with, with his keys, like, oh, I want to drive us home, right? He's like, and my sorority sister and his fraternity brother are with us. Like, they just finding out he crazy, right? We, I get to the car. I jump in the car to to drive us home. Let me tell you how fucking nuts this nigga is. We are off campus. It's like raining because I'll never forget it because the ground was wet and I had to walk through it. He jumps out the fucking car before I even bring it to like an official like stop to park, right? He jumps out the car and he darts to our apartment, right? He goes, how our apartment was set up, you walk in and it's the living room and we had two bedrooms and they're both on the left side. He go and our bedroom was all the way back. He jumps in the living room and he goes, Fuck you. You want me to go to jail. Nigga. What? I'll call him <laughs> back right now. <laughs> I, that's what I just talked this nigga out of the police, out of handcuffs in the police car, right? So at this point, so I go, you know what? This is after a year, this man being like emotionally unhinged. Like when he starts cursing me out, I want him to go to jail. I don't care about him. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. That's what I say. I go, I, I say, I'm done. I walk back to our bedroom. I change into, and I still have it. I change into this giant navy blue shirt with Tweety Bird on it. And I go to bed. I am telling y'all, I close my eyes. You have no idea how fast this man ran from the living room there. Like, before I could open my eyes, like, at hearing the sound of his voice, like, or hearing the sound of him running down the hallway, he is choking me, right? And, like, and I remember I realized, like, dog. The moment where I realized I cannot get this nigga's hands off my neck, like I'm doing everything I can to get, and I cannot, like, oh, this nigga can, he's going to kill me, right? And so he only lets go of my neck long enough to take, I had braids at the time, to, like, take me by my braids, grab me, and throw me across the room. Like, he he grabbed me so much, my, literally the braids, like three braids from the top of my scalp rip out, right? And he kicks me in the head, like, 36 times, I tell y'all. And while he's doing it, he's screaming, like, oh, I don't take accountability, I don't take accountability while he is doing this. Right. Cool. Then I like when I finally get free, I'm trying to like call his mommy for help. Right. Like call the phone. I'm like screaming for help. When I run to the kitchen, that's when I hear a knock on the door. I open the door. It's the exact same police officers. I just convinced not to lock this nigga up. It's small town in Ohio. So he's going to jail. They not like hearing it. Right. Mind you, I'm now like ripped up, tattered, all that. Like, and I'm still like, please don't arrest him. Don't arrest him. Don't arrest him. He's in the back bedroom. Like, fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I could hear him. Right. Now we call his, my call his mommy to help him to have his mommy, like help me, um, um, not get him arrested. Right. But I told you he's black, but his mommy is white. This woman tells them to take him. <laughs> right. Like tells them to take him. But then she comes like the very the next day, comes, drives down to the apartment to take my shit and throw it out our apartment and tell me, oh, this is my fault because I shouldn't have broke up with him. That was immature. I'm done is the reason. (laughs) And that was and that was the story. That was fuck you and your son. Yeah, because because I said I'm done. So there's a way, mind you, like there is a way that 
every you act like they act like shit just comes out of fucking nowhere like these mm-hmm. things they, it ain't happen out of thin air right like how something and how you go to go enable some of you think something is cool is in a world where you have mothers and fathers and friends and people who like give you feed you the excuse or like look into like oh well, what did you do well you shouldn't have done that and you should have thought this even though they know <clears throat> that these people didn't just fucking abuse you out of thin air they know they've seen the fucking aspects of these people's violence and whatever have you and it's that shit right there like it's 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 what we're raising and how we're raising and it's this mistake that we act like we act like Agreed. our children and the people because like, remember that like these are originally people who belong these are children these start off as children people raised and groomed by their communities and what are we who what are we raising and then once the shit comes like up to light it's like everybody act like 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 they had no part in it and it's like do we not take do we not have a part and what we're what we're raising, like in our in our community, and what we're excusing, and like we all do it, right? Like we all do it. I could even say in my own, like I said, I I, I can think of at, when he did that the same way. Like Christina's like, oh, he got me copped in that loop. I remember, I like I told you, I didn't want him to get arrested or anything like that. I wrote a leniency letter to get him out and all of this. I was there, like oh, you know, maybe I never seen him act like this. Like, oh, he would never hit me. There must have been something in the Sigma juice. Like, I'm coming up with all kind of shit and reasons. Like, oh, maybe he has, like, some kind of psychological, you know what I mean? Blah, 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 blah. I'm, like, coming up with every reason for why this other than, like, a man who believes, who, who truly just doesn't believe that I have the right to, to you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, not, and it, a lot of that is that. Exactly. And I've been, yeah, yeah Tahoe. Yeah, I, just, I, was, I was gonna um, mention, like, kind of going to bring back to the whole Cassie situation. Somebody mentioned, like, the video, Diddy's running out of the hotel room in, like, a towel, which means she thought this was the best moment for her to escape, mm-hmm. and it wasn't, um, which is why, like, I hear this a lot from people in the community and whatever it is. People just think the solution to abusive relationship is to just leave. Mm-hmm. But physically speaking, and, the, and, most and the most dangerous time, time for a person who's in an abusive relationship is when they are trying to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you want to leave. Like, matter of fact, I, there's been many stories of women being killed at the courthouse parking lot because she's trying to get a restraining order. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. So, like those things, like um, th- that's why there's something called a safety plan. A lot of um, domestic violence agencies do this thing with, with, with survivors, where they have to figure out, like, let's talk about this abuser. Well, like, what are the ins and outs? Where did they go to work? What time do they wake up? Because we have to find the most like safe time for you to leave. Because any to just walk out middle of the night or walk out when you think he's asleep or he's in the shower. Can I can could be the worst sign? Yeah. Right? So if I may, if I may add a little yeah. context, Rebecca, to that, I have so many points I want to talk about, but I'll just do this one right now. I remember trying to leave my abusive relationship and she wouldn't let me. Like she held a gun to my face once. I remember another time trying to get out the house. She literally climbed on my back and like ripped my shirt off my back and like ripped it. And so when I finally found, like when I was finally done. I laid in the bed next to her. I waited till she went to work. I counted the minutes that she was gone to make sure that she made it to the train. And I was like, all right, she can't come back now. So I get up, I start packing all my stuff, packing all my stuff. The landlord calls her, I guess while I was bringing my stuff down to the car, the landlord calls her and was like, yo, are you moving? And Mm -hmm. she's like, no. And he's like, somebody's moving. And so she's calling me, calling me. And she's like, I'm on my way. You bitch ass nigga. You better not leave. You better not leave. And like, I literally took my phone. Like I left all my stuff and I took my phone and I left it in the house Mm -hmm. and I left. And I just basically disappeared off the face of the earth. But yeah, like basically to you saying that there's like a safe, what'd you say? It's a safety plan to leave. I literally had to plan it in my head on how to fucking get up out of there. And Mm -hmm. obviously I know this makes me sound like, I was the abused one. We were in an abusive relationship. It, it was both. But at some point, I realized, like, yo, this is crazy. And I, yeah. it was hard for me to get the fuck out of it. So even when you're in, because I guess we all can say that, or most of us here can say that we've been in some sort of a, an abusive relationship. Um, and even for me, no long story here, but when I lived in New York, that's the reason why I left New York, because of an abusive relationship. Um, to the point where cops will be passing by and wouldn't give a damn. That man, like, I was locked into a car and a cop was passing by and I'm screaming in the car. This man is locking me in here. I'm I'm kicking the window in. And they're just looking because they've seen us in the streets already. It's been so much. Um, and they're just like, oh, it's just them. And people just, it, w- it was that type of thing. Also, Tahoe, you know, I know you said you were both abusive. Sometimes when you get in a relationship and... 
you feel like you can't leave because this person is going to be physically, you know, something's about to go down. You become, you've been in the relationship so long, yeah. you don't even know who you are anymore. You become that was. person. It's and now both of you guys. Yes. Yeah. And now you're abusing this person. They're abusing you. That's the only way you're surviving in the relationship for real. <laughs> um, and the, the, the day that I decided to leave, I never forget it. He thought everybody in the streets wanted me. And it could be anybody who looked my way or whatever the case may be. He called me all kinds of names. He was half white too, Ole. Um, he was um, Congolese and he was Russian. And, um, you know, I I feel like he had a lot of issues and all. Like, you know, the, the excuses that I used to make for him. He, and then me as well, um, not too much on it, but I love, you know, my parents, but I grew up in an abusive household every single day, yeah. every yeah. single day. Same. And then to go here and I watch, you know, um, my parent save the other parent when, you know, a police came. I, I watched the same thing that you were saying that you went through. Like, and for me, I'd be like, I remember when the cops did take us on the street and they were like, you know, tell him to be quiet or whatever. I had, I'm like, well, he is running his mouth. He's over there doing the same thing. F the police, they trying to, because I'm this, because I'm that. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, you know, can you guys please just let him go? I'll, I'll walk him home. I'll do that, those type of things. And we'll get home. And then he's cussing me out saying I was looking at the police officer or I was doing, I was doing all kinds of things. And I was only, he was older than me. I think I, I was only about 20 years old. And I'll never forget my escape because I said, man, like he's, I have to do what he's saying. I remember it was so bad. I had to jump the turnstile with no shoes on in the snow. Okay. Um, but I remember the day I said it was enough was I w came down um, and I was having bad cramps during my cycle. He came and saved me and it was, uh, and he brought me to his place and I was laying down and he was like, you know, just going off about something I can't even remember. And I was just looking at him. I'm like, this man is going to hurt me today. He's going to hurt me. And I'm just so tired. I want to, I, I don't want to go back home. I just, you know, graduated college. My parents didn't want me to move to New York, I, but I need to go home. I need to go home. I'm from Florida. And I remember that night, like it was yesterday. He got so mad at me. He was cursing me out for whatever reason. He took his size 12 sandal. And I was like in this little room. Um, he took the size 12 sandal and he threw it and it just barely passed my face. And I was like, dang, and he told me, like, what's so crazy, y'all? I had to calm him down the best way I knew. And I wasn't even into sex like that. But I had to do that to calm him down and so that he can just be calm and sleep. He even tried to use that against me and said that my body belonged to him, that kind of thing. But I knew if I did that, he would just relax. He relaxed. I called a cab and I just took the little that I had and I left. He allegedly showed up at the airport, but I made it home. Like, I made it home. When I got home, um, this is what people who feel like they have power over you do. When I got home, he sent me messages and threatened to take, um, to sit, put out a video that I, again, I was new to sex, right? And he filmed us what without my around? acknowledgement and threatened to put that out. Send it to me and threatened to put that out there. Um, and then on top of that, I didn't answer none of that. He found my parents' address and he came to my house. I was sleeping that day. He came to my house and my nephew came to me. <laughs> he told me, my father was there. He told me, um, Tati, that's what he called me. He said, I seen, um, somebody came here for you. He, this, he knew how to talk really well. He said, somebody came here from you and he had the same skin color as me. But grandpa said you weren't here. He told him that you were not here and for that guy never to come back. And I'm thinking, who, who will come for me here? And then I looked at my phone. I had so many messages saying, I came there. Your dad lied. I know you're there. But he said that you're not there for me not to come back. And I never wrote back. I deleted that, the whole thread. And I changed my number. And then I... um move to another state because I didn't want that. That man's crazy. I didn't want that drama come into my house and all the other stuff. Yeah. And I just moved to another state. And I, I just think that yeah. it's really, it's really great that that video came out. I know it's horrible for Cassie. Um, and I know it, it's, it speaks to a lot of the, like we all normalize a lot of this shit and it's all fucked up. But I think a lot of, a lot of people seen themselves in that video. Um, and I think that, it, I think it's necessary for you to see 
what the fuck you're doing. Um, even me today, I'm thinking about what happened to me, what, what happened with me over 20 some years ago. And I'm just m even more apologetic now, but I start thinking about why that happened. And I just, right. as Pierre said, it's like, once I saw it, it became an option. Something yeah. that, okay, so that's a route that happens in relationships. But then I think about how I present myself in relationships, um, how men show up often as women are property, almost like you mm. have to, as Rebe Rebecca said, you are. I own your body even. Like, I don't see you as a human being. You have to listen to me. Once you don't listen to me or once you invalidate me, once I'm not this powerful, sexy, amazing man to you and you start looking at me as if I'm weak, I now have an option to show you I am not weak, which you're, you're becomes absolutely right. physical. Yeah, so, but you yeah, know what? It's yeah, not just I think one, you're... Oh, you're sorry. Over here. No, okay, yeah, uh, it's not just one thing that happens that makes somebody uh, um, abusive. Actually, like just I think the recent video of like Joe Budden, where he's literally talking about how he stalked somebody or whatever, um, whatever he did. I think to, her name's like uh, Tahiri. Yeah, Tahiri. Yeah, like those instances. Like when you're like the, the combination of men being told and taught that they possess and own women. And then seeing examples of how you can maintain power over women, all that combined, you're going to get an abuser. Here's, here's the one step further. I think the black community never like truly, truly wants to go in these conversations. Right. Like, and I think that's the reason why, like, what's so dangerous about people just throwing their hands up, like, oh my God, this person's so terrible. Throw them, you know, like, ah, the boogeyman. Right. Is when you say, I was having this kind conversa of conversation with Antoinette on her podcast around the way curls. But when you say something like, oh, what did he needs help or these men need help or these people need help. What people think you're saying is that they need therapy or they need something or, you know, it is something, it's something that they have the resources to have gotten. But what it really is, is we all need help for what we think is okay because this starts with child abuse. Mm -hmm. I think like, and, I'm, and let me just say this, like, the way it's not just Tahoe hit it on the money on how um, men, you know, seek to control women or how they think and respond. But we also have to talk about how women, especially when we're talking in our communities, we're black, the show is black and all this. Right. But talking about how we raise children, how we treat and it is normal to us. Like it makes perfect sense. Like there are actually some statistics on this. I think FD Signifier might have some videos, like some good, like good videos on this. But if you think a way it becomes normal for like, OK, the man can then turn around and beat his women or his woman or whatever right like that's who's smaller than that's who underneath them and then the woman turns around and beats the children and there's a way like what are you i always think about this what are you teaching like what are you teaching if not to respond with violence when someone doesn't you know respond like this you teach people that if somebody is smaller than you and you can control them you use violence because think about how many women who talk about how they used to beat their sons until their sons were big enough to physically dominate them right like that is, mm -hmm. a, is a thing like i even think my um one of my my brothers has a is is has a little bit of a, a psychosis. He can have like a psychosis kind of thing from once in a blue moon, and he'll be violent. And my mummy will be on the phone with me, acting like, "Where did this come from? Oh my god! Like he's this like alien monster that we can't control. That she don't know where it's coming from." And I'm like, "From y'all." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. from fucking y'all. Like, all I'm like, it makes the only re you see what I'm saying? So I'm like, if you combine, yeah. like, 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 that's what you taught. Like, you ruled with violent, with, with brute force in the house, and now you're shocked. You know what I mean? And that's what I, I, I've talked a lot about is the way that we, like, we groom, like, not just, like, not just men, because women too, but, like, we're grooming people in patriarchal violence and then somehow expecting them to, like, turn 18 and be like, ah! I have all these healthy tools you've never taught me. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we teach. It's so normal. And think about it. To me, the, the, the reason why it doesn't strike me as, as helpful to see, like, the video or the video come out is because I know the community is not ready to have the real conversation. Because anytime anybody talks about not beating your children, every fucking body, you see the smartest people, the this people, da 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 da, da everybody fighting for their right to beat on little children. Like, in real life, there's nothing that an adult, like, it's not a normal commonplace for you to respond that way. But yet, we think it's okay. Like, we need to be able to beat kids because so many people use children as an outlet to, 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 to exercise authority and power and control. They have nowhere else in their life, right? So, mm -hmm. like, 
if you're teaching, it's really, it's really not this like crazy foreign concept. When you talk to people about what they do or their habits or how they respond to life or how they handle problems, it has everything to do with how they were raised. I am a person like people I block, like I'm sure there are all kind of people on the internet talking about how I block them, right? Like I block your ass in a heartbeat and I block in real life. If you know me as a personal person, I will block you in a fucking heartbeat. And you know why? Because I have parents that are avoidant and will block you in a fucking heartbeat. Like I was raised <laughs> in a house household like that you know what i'm saying like you're not like we're not these foreign fucking anomalies the reason why you see so many people willing to respond with violence is because they grew up in households where people were responding with violence and if we don't have grace for little children if we will justify as a community as the communal position to believe you need to beat your fucking children of course they're gonna be men that think yeah even though technically out in the public position you know public i'm not supposed to say that yeah a lot of other a lot of them will quietly have that conversation and think it's normal you know what i mean or even the way that like the amount of and it goes both ways think about the way we don't respond to like violence against we don't see women will it's the way you'll be watching a reality tv show and a man a woman will be, be beaten on a man on the show all the time and the show just continues the minute mm -hmm. a man is accused of the, the screen is black and they're off the show right meanwhile you're watching women abuse men on there for years and could because we don't think of it like so you see what i'm saying it goes both ways of this constant violence and who we deem it to be okay from and when it's okay so I think like the actual help we need as a community is how much we're invested in violence. We can't pick and choose when we like, in we enforce violence. We give violence, like Pierre said, like Tahoe said, like once you show people that that is the tool that they can use, that's what happens. And especially to what Christina said earlier about that, like reactive abuse. Like I remember when I was in that relationship with my college boyfriend before he ever physically put hands on me, but he was just nuts every fucking day, just arguing, arguing, arguing. And every day I'm trying to find like ways, like exacerbated, like, like exhausted, trying to like figure out how to communicate with him healthy. And then eventually you go, I have to match his crazy. That's what you think. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then that becomes normal that you think like there's some relationships like this. The way that like I'll see people talking like they'll talk about like uh, Tyler Perry's Why Did I Get Married? And people will people be trying to be edgy and go as far as to be like, you know, uh, Tasha and thingy were actually the healthiest relationship. No. They're actually no. still not a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Those other relationships are, are fucked up and it's fucked up to at any point be screaming and like violently violence towards your partner or emotion. But do we have all these different circumstances throughout our community where we tell ourselves, eh, well, you know, yeah, yeah. and we act like this is a great that's area. Because, and I that's what I'm saying uh, because I, like, we, hmm. Sorry, so I was saying earlier, like, because we see instances of like physical violence on screen, we try to minimize the verbal, the emotional violence. And I, like, I'm glad you mentioned Tyler Perry. So many people get their idea of what domestic violence is through Tyler Perry movies and think um, that's the only way it could be abusive. I also you know think, I mean? like, for some fucking reason within the black community, it's not like this shit happens with white folks. It happens, we see, we, we see white men kill, they kill their wife and they put them, you know, on the news riding a jet ski as part of the headline. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's like, we... I feel like there's a part of it where it's like we've indoctrinated that we deserve violence. So for as much as it's like, I've tried, I, I try to delicately like figure this out because I know it's like, well, this is white supremacy and patriarchy. Yeah. But like, if the white man wasn't in the room, we would still be doing the shit. And that is what we yeah, see. Yeah. Like, uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. I think what it is, is when, especially like, when Greg mentioned like child abuse, um, or they like, when you're a child and you're being abused, you're being told why you're being abused. Yeah. Right? So, like, they're giving you an excuse about why you're being abused. When you get older and your partner's giving you another reason as to why they're abusive, why they're abusive towards you, it's like, okay, yeah, that's that's what my parents told me, too. So maybe I am the problem. Mm -hmm. I want to say yeah. this. Go, mm. go ahead, Rebecca. I just feel like, you know, it's, it's so true how... I feel like it's systemic, the whole thing. We've all said it. It, it is how, you know, the upbringing, all the things. It's mentally, it's emotionally. It's all of these things that play a role in it. And then there's that piece that is also, you know, I feel like our community isn't ready to have in the, in a way like how Tahoe was expressing himself and remorseful for his actions, but trying to understand why he got there, how he mm. got there. Um, we here we are. It's like, should we forgive Diddy or how like Kelly Price coming out and saying just immediately, 
um, not acknowledging um, Cassie or what happened with her, but mm -hmm. more so just the abuser and how he deserves forgiveness. Um, and that that's the problem. A lot of times, a lot of us here, as we talk about our experiences with that, it's like we put ourselves back there. Seeing it was triggering. So healing is not a definite thing, like when it comes to um, the abuse. I bet you Cassie having people reach out to her, you know, it was like reliving the situation over and over again. But she did it because she knows she had to do it. Um, but my thing is with Diddy, like, does he deserve... Like I said, I grew up in a family and every day, I'm telling you, every day, every single day up until I went to college, I saw abuse in my household. Um, mm -hmm. My mother was somebody who, the way that she had to become, she was very soft in the beginning. And the way that she had to become was very tough and masculine, which I see in me at times, even before I got into an abusive relationship, because that was something I created for myself, like to shield myself from people like that and then get in it. And now I'm acting like my mom again in protecting those type of people. While I do understand that they deserve, um, people deserve uh, forgiveness. I believe that. But those type of people that like Diddy, who have re has been out here, a terrible person, so many different stories, somebody who's been actively doing this, um, using his power, abusing his power, um, threatening folks, uh, and acting on those threats, all types of things. That type of person, I don't know, just because he's black and he's, de he's done stuff for the culture, do we have to sit here and say he deserves forgiveness? No, I feel like he should be right there uh, next to, to R. Kelly. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, like, especially with no particular work, like, I, I have two points, because there's a lot of times where people think the work is asking for forgiveness, the work is mm -hmm. going to church, um, mm -hmm. or even going to therapy, which isn't, like, any example of being at all repentant or actually looking back on your on your actions, because, again, when it came out that she had these things alleged, he didn't stay quiet, he didn't... Uh, say yes that was something i did and blah 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 he denied it Denounced vehemently it. <laughs> said that that was not him that they were lying on his character and until the video came out he continued to do that and now his apology again is for who i assume that it's for some weak attempt at pr but also i wanted to bring up uh, as we were talking a bit about like repeating the same violent behaviors i think there's also something to be said on the emotional side of it where we kind of um, not only normalize like emotionally abusive behavior that often leads into physical, physically abusive behavior, but we also in a way romanticize it. And this is something that I've been kind of like wrapping my head around a bit because for a very long time, I was one of those girls that would like read like the romance novels and blah, blah, blah. And it's usually riddled with like and not just in novels, but like movies and media. And especially if we're talking about in regards to like Tyler Perryan <laughs> works where there is this tying together of emotional abuse with romance or love. And in some ways getting those wires crossed. I remember I, um, I saw like a tweet that was lightly like in a funny way talking about like, yeah, that's how relationships are. And then there was a video under it that was like, a guy getting bombarded by his girlfriend just like going off like emotionally abusing him while he's asleep and he's like oh that's just how it is and i kind of re <laughs> i retweeted it saying something along the lines of like i'm gonna need us to start recognizing when we're getting emotionally abused because y'all everybody and yeah. everybody in the comments was just like yeah that's how it is a ha 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 it's yeah. so crazy yeah. like, a lot yeah, of that has no. to do with like oops no there's a <laughs> like no it reminds me of like because we were so used to violence, I forgot who made that point that we're, I think we've all just kind of echoed the point that we're so used to violence. So it's like, you'll talk about, oh, well, you know, he called me a bitch or he told me to shut the fuck up. And then maybe you have a friend or your mom or your grandma, like, well, you know, my man, he dragged me across the floor. Yeah. My man, he did this. And it's like, you also were abused. So we agree yes. <laughs> that we collectively, I've been experiencing abuse. And I remember my mom was asking me down to this being, you know, pattern when I was in my abusive relationship, I got out of it and she was no blaming. Right. But she was like, dang, I'm asking myself, like, how did my baby get in this scenario? And I was like, well, girl, it's time to have a real discussion because mm -hmm. what did I see between <laughs> you and dad? And when 
your son, my brother started exhibiting these behaviors really young and started hitting on me, right? Y'all allowed it. And then hitting on, hitting on me as my brother, as an adult, you're talking about, well, you know, it takes two sides to have to, for a relationship to break down. It's like, that is something that's been normalized. And it's not, I'm not mad at you because I know you went through it and I know grandma went mm. through it, but like, mm. this is the pattern. So how can you ask me how so, did that, how do you find me there? When I found, I found you there before I could even cognitively realize it. Okay. And you found yourself there before you could cognitively realize it. And she was like, damn, you know, like that's, that that's true. That's so rude. And I feel like we haven't yet gotten to that. Like, it feels like such a specific black community like thing because we've gone through so much that mm-hmm. we just get crumbs. And it's so difficult to like realize, okay, but this emotional abuse, this man calling me a bitch is also not okay. He might not have yet put his hands on me, but I was being abused mm. the whole time, you know? Your mom is like years ahead of most. Cause like, yeah. my, my, my mama don't get it. Like when I try to explain to her, like, she, she, like, think, like, I remember when my daddy wasn't talking to me in like the ninth grade because I had a fucking boyfriend and, and like, and, and I, so my, I, I had a boyfriend. I had a boyfriend and someone spread a rumor that I had like done something sexual with my boyfriend. Ooh, my teenage, you know, my daddy is not speaking to me for a year, for a year. I am ashamed to the family or whatever. And my mother, rather than think about the level of fucking, like when I see it as an adult, there are so many times as a kid where I knew my fucking parents were wrong and I was at ba- at odds with them and they were trying to tell me that, oh, and I'm older now and I'm like, you're even wronger than I had the understanding <laughs> of like, and like, and I remember my mommy made, my daddy was not taught. Talk- Imagine that you're his wife, you, this man not talking to his daughter for a year. And she's telling me to write him, a, write him a letter every single day that he's not answering. And she's like, oh, just keep doing it. And I think about what kind of fucking what you would have taught me like the lesson there is to run behind fucking men who don't who don't want mm-hmm. who are not speaking to you are not acknowledging you and beg that like you see that and she doesn't see that you know what i mean so like mm-hmm. something i've been thinking about recently right is because i'm really 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 trying to be more mindful i i try i try because i don't like a lot of the opinions of random people on the internet i have to be i have to be a lot more intro- right i have to be a lot more introspective so i could at least say i am doing some kind of reflection even if i'm not reflecting on what you niggas is talking about but there are a lot of people on the internet like i have people who feel like who like there are black men who say i hate black men and then there are black women who say that i hate black women because i coddle black men so much right like there is all of the different dynamics and i feel like i have this complicated relationship as someone who is a victim of domestic violence, but also as an abolitionist and a defense attorney and all these different things. Um, but also something I'm, ref- I'm reflecting on is, especially as the rising conversation on Gen X black women, as we see Jill Scott and Erica Badu and Tar- Taraji and all these like older black women, you know, be a part of the problem. And we know historically how much like when you think of abuse in our communities, how much there it has been hidden and protected by older women and stuff in the families. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking about how much that generation was educated to, or like we're all raised and including ourselves because that's the generation that raised us, right? To to sympathize with the abuser or the abuse, right? Like I realize how much like, like how it's not even in, I think sometimes like I remember being in like my freshman year of college when like the Evelyn Lozado and and, and um, Ocho Cinco for thing first stopped happened like 17, 18. And I remember my first fucking thought process was to vilify Evelyn. You know what I mean? Like my <laughs> first thought process is what the fuck did, you know what I mean? And I, it's because I, I had a mother who was like the little girl with R. Kelly is fresh. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yep. like, you know what I mean? Who who will yes. lay over bed before you say something about a Michael Jackson in the house. You know what I mean? And, and so, and I, so sometimes I get so annoyed what I'm trying to, I guess I'm trying to reconcile this to myself and I'm just speaking loud to y'all because I've been thinking about this. Sometimes I get so annoyed with how the uh, the internet or my internet space, I feel like is it, the opposite extreme, right? Like it always feels like it's like this really carceral feminism, this real like adoption of all the things I don't like in the criminal system, but in our social rhetoric. And then, uh, and like, I don't like terms like abuser and all these different things. And then I think to myself, well, well, especially when I was looking at Kelly Price's comments and all of them, and I was like, Jesus Christ, I guess, if the entire generations before have all been educated the opposite way to have sympathy with the abuser, I guess, in order to to create any generation of people that have sympathy for the abuse, we might have to have this generation of people that are like intensely the other way. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. even though I don't like it, I, I thought about it. I was like, is this what's needed in order for us to even, because right now we don't seem to have, you know, uh, a, a community or a world that 
is inclined to be on the side of the victim. And that being said, also, I want to make sure I include this about um, men and boys, especially black men and boys. Black abuse and sexual abuse and violence against black men and boys is so erased, like erased, mm-hmm. like in, it's mm-hmm. invisible, like in a way, even the way that like we talk about like abuse is though like, yeah, it's factually like majority happening to women and da, 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 da. and it is happening a lot to women and happen, but it's also happening a lot to men. The difference is a man cannot discuss abuse that society doesn't perceive as abuse. Like I mm-hmm. always think about like men in my family who've been like, I know as in my family, I know how to, what abuse they're experiencing or whatever. And, and they're like, I would be laughed at. I would be, I would be made a joke of like, mm-hmm. man, people will not take that as abuse. So I think of my freshman year of college, I was a learning community leader. And one of my like mentees was sexually assaulted by a girl. But what he asked me was, can I be sexually assaulted? Like even as a man, you know what I mean? And I think about the amount of men that I have dated that have been, or I've known that have been sexually abused by older women or even older men, yeah. or, you know what I mean? In their families. And that is like it happens so it's it's unreal how how common that experience for as common as it is for me to know women that have been abused and have experienced domestic violence is as common as it is for me to know black men and black boys that have been sexually abused and like you even see it like in real you see the famous people they will be discussing they're like how they lost their virginity and like you were raped you're a Mm -hmm. victim like i actually have a theory that a lot of men who who will struggle to 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 believe the victim or see the victim uh, is because they haven't yet realized their own victimization, especially when it comes to mm-hmm. sexual exactly. assault and domestic violence, exactly. because a lot of stories I've heard from men, I'm like, baby, exactly. you were a victim. Mm-hmm. So, and if you've ever tried to actually talk to someone about their own victimhood, there's this trigger that happens where they're like, that's not me. No, that's not me. That's not what that mm-hmm. is. Because then they have to realize and see themselves that they mm-hmm. have survived One. that. Well, and yeah, like when I was, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I was um, oh. going, if I may very quickly, P, I apologize. No, um, cool. I remember growing up and going to my friend's house and seeing how his parents treated him. Even in adversity, even when he did something wrong, it was still like a loving, it was a stern conversation. It was, you know, some sort of, hey, you can't go to this event. But when I went home, it was, you violated me. You mm-hmm. now have to pay for it physically. The, in, the environment around you is now almost hateful. It's yes. angry. It, there is pain that's coming because of this. And as I got older and I realized it, it's the difference between being raised with fear and being raised with love. And then how that, again, imprints on onto you. Um, I remember running away at some point and going to his house and he wound up letting me, his parents wound up letting me uh, stay at at their house. And I was like crumbling, like as a boy, like, why do I have to go through this? I actually said this as a, as a child, 16, I think was when I ran away. Why do I have to go through this? Like, why doesn't she love me? Right. Um, I just want to say that to that, because as I got older, of course, I never knew how to express that. I never knew how to really say those feelings to anybody else. And then when it got to a certain point, I shut down. Again, it became physical, right? Uh, um, Ole, I said earlier that it's important for men to have seen that video. The reason yeah. why is because I believe a lot of them weren't raised with dads. A lot of them were raised by their mom who were trying to cover the space left by the father not being there and who had to be a lot more aggressive to raise this boy and that shit now again imprinted on them and they're acting that way because they don't know no fucking better a lot of these niggas yeah. just don't know there's a lot of followers on the internet a but lot dog. of followers on the internet that are look still looking for their father so i think that it's important for them to see that see the vitriol that the community is placing on that video on that behavior so that they can say oh wait what i learned before that's you're not supposed to do that oh Shit, if 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 I do this, they're gonna see me. They're gonna see this behavior in me and they're gonna not they're not gonna like but, me. So so I guess like oh so many things, right? Uh so many things. To what uh Christina was saying, like what a, a 
about them like not being able to rec- not wanting to recognize recognize their own victimization right and like why we which is a lot of the reason why like black people are not interested in accepting child abuse right and bell hooks mm-hmm. talks about like bell hooks talks about this and all about love it's this idea that like we believe that our parents love us unequivocally right like we and we see love is like what they tell us what they believe not just in all the actions and what have you and if we have to accept a world where that is abusive that that shakes at us about what we believe about our relationships with our parents and about what love is and all these different things and we're not willing we're not willing to face that also i have an ex-boyfriend like a like a long-term serious ex who sexually assaulted me um or like a, a, a few years back and i remember like shocked floored outraged you know about that and i remember like a year later like him experiencing something like pretty much almost identically the scenario but a woman doing it to him and I thought he was calling to tell me he gets it now you know what I mean like I thought like okay like God in my mind like God put you in in the same position so you could see what was so fucking wrong about that and it was in him talking about that that I realized this man fundamentally doesn't like literally doesn't get it like he's in like even when he was describing it to me and like he realizing like it's uncomfortable or he didn't like it or he felt away or you're going through something when i called it like sexual assault like yeah she did he's like no 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 you know what i mean so in or and and i get that because i can think of times even when like in my um when i think i think back to experiences when i was 22 or whatever and i realized like oh that man took advantage of me or that man like pressured me or whatever. But, and when you realize that, and then you realize how many times that has happened or whatever, that fucks you up. Like that really yes. fucks you up. And it's not like that fucks yeah. you up. It I'm telling you today, you you relive it. That? And then you realize how many of these experiences that were not what they, Oh, it's a fucking, it's a fucked up feeling. Like it's really, it's really, it's really something. So I, I, um, yeah, dog, like, it's yeah. like the processing has been delayed, so you feel you like relive it, and now you have to relive yeah. the trauma of it because you didn't yeah. realize it was trauma. It be fucking you up. And well, it's you crazy because too, you know what? It's the worst. Is like realizing like they don't perceive it like that. Like I know exactly. there are lots of that's the what like. That's, that's the, the crazy thing about shit, it. Bro. They don't perceive it like that. They are not consciously, and that's the scariest thing about this gray area of life when people are when these things are being received as though it's normal and this happens and people's understandings. Like I remember in law school, right. Um, when we were learning about rape and criminal law, because rape is a illegal thing and it truly like it changes from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So like what rape means is like, uh, uh, sex is, is sex without, without, sex without consent by force right or something like that each jurisdiction defines those words differently so you'll have places that like jurisdictions in this in america that see by force as meaning physical force so if that woman wasn't like fighting you off they won't consider it rape or you'll have places like a new jersey that like will recognize a forcible compulsion like oh the way you like like manipulated so there would be cases when i realized how tricky shit was there would be cases we'd be going over as a class where like they reading all the facts of the case and all the different like step by step and the whole class is supposed to like vote in on whether or not we think it was rape and niggas truly being divided like whether or not we felt like consent happened because of the way that we live in a society like we live in a society that's not about enthusiastic consent or affirmative consent like there are some jurisdictions like think about how this like become their jurisdictions that be like they recognize like, oh, I think uh, New Jersey is an affirmative co- consent jurisdiction. So you need to have like explicitly said like you consent to this or so, yeah, yes, versus some states are like, no. So there's all of these different things that basically reflect all the different misunderstandings we have about sex and consent in our society, right? So like what one part like th- is being received as a green light versus this and da 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 and in the class, like we trials and tribulations. And that's the shit that is like, that's what really fucks me up about real life. And I think fucks people up about recognizing whether or not they've been a victim or they've been a perpetrator all these different things is feeling like this person doesn't know this thing that i tell them like i don't know if y'all seen baby rain there yes but like yes yeah. such a good show but like, such a good show yeah mm-hmm. but like even in baby rain there like how he feels like how could i have reported her when i didn't report this person who committed this greater abuse against me right like and there are a lot of people that feel that way and a lot of people who also feel like how do I how do I recognize or own this as having been this experience for me when I don't believe that this person perceives it that way or thinks they set out to do that or how do you know what I mean? And there's all this different shit that just makes it so. Can you I know, ask question? The legal system does play a part in like how people uh, report certain things 
Um, because mm. like I think in California, that thing that's the only that's the only state right now that recognizes stuffing as a form of sexual violence. So like really? in California, yeah, like if somebody yeah. takes off oh, the wow. without your consent, they'll they'll say, Yeah, this was bad, but there's no legal repercussion we can give to this person mm. unless you're in California. So right, so like, but like I said, I'm in Florida because I'm in Florida, whatever it is. I can have experience you, that kind of like <laughs> I can have that kind of violence, right? That kind of kind of experience. But like, I, I I feel like I can't tell anybody because I know the legal system is not going to see it that way. Mm-hmm. And if I report it, and like I said, I do report it, and it becomes like a whole public thing, and then the person doesn't get charged, I look like the person trying to take somebody down. Right. But I'm that's how right. that's how people perceive it right now on on the internet. How um, Cassie tried to take uh, Diddy down. That's the mm-hmm. that's the talking point, and we'll see that with other people, even with the Tahiri and Joe Biden thing. Of course, we're going to have all these different views online, but I think it's a patriarchy thing. It's a systemic thing. It's literally all of the above mixed in together. But what we need to be able to do is call a thing a thing. Diddy has abused his power. I don't care if he was black, white, in between. It sucks to see a black black relationship or a black man in a relationship and see him this way but we got to see him for what he is because if we continue to make excuses like these people we're going to get people like Cameron's ass who think it's okay Ooh. to try to have that conversation like oh, we need Abby, to talk about that with Can Abby Phillips that's why I'm veering in yeah. because time Someone, is ticking Aaron but, complain uh, that video no yeah. no we're back we're back and now we got to see it because I it was your okay. time like, yeah you brought it up okay, let's, let's, let's talking about it I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I'm truly sorry. Joining me now is Cameron Giles, better known as the rapper Cameron. He's also the co-host of the podcast, It Is What It Is. Thanks for being here. First, when you saw that video of Diddy, Cassie uh, in that hotel, did you recognize that Sean Combs? Um, what I want to say, first of all, when I seen the video, um, everything in the video is egregious. I'm against, uh, I don't support, uh, all the charges that's alleged against them. I don't support any of that traffic and minors, uh, domestic violence. I'm totally against it. So when I seen the video, yeah, I was kind of upset with it. Uh, no, being that I know him, he's not necessarily a friend, but yeah, I was upset when I seen it. But did, did you recognize as as everything him? I just said? Did you recognize right. that I kind of anger at all from your experiences? I don't know him like that. What did you mean? Do I be recognized? Did I recognize him? I've seen him. What do you mean my experiences? I've seen him and I thought I thought it was I disgusting. Get... I didn't do a Paul zoom Rick in to here. see if it was really him or nothing, but he admitted it was him. So. It's what? the way this nigga acting era fucking tated with her about the appearance he agreed to come, Dude, on. come he on. He acting like, bitch, what? Like, you know when someone bothering you and passing, like, bitch, what the fuck you asking me for? I already said, leave me the fuck alone. Like, I said, I'm going. Like, that's how he's, his whole energy is like, the question is very, why you come on here? Like, you clearly intentionally came on to disrespect this woman. So I'm gonna call Look, you I bitch. was just talking. I was saying, I was saying ten words, but let me before we continue to play it because I was on mute and I need to get this out. Before we continue to play it, let's be really clear, right? I'm a journalist, right? For people who be like, oh my god, no. I know how this goes. Yes, when you're sitting in interviews like with Gail King, those hour-long, 15-minute type things, these short-ass appearances, this is a short appearance. She was not trying to do a 10-minute, 20-minute, 50-minute, one-hour interview with him where she's, you know, going to do follow-up questions as to what he answers. No, there's a time limit. And for these slots, first of all, CNN, stop bringing these people onto your platforms. That's one. But let's be damn clear. When you are asked to come on the show, and especially if your your um, booking person is doing it, or if you you are gonna ask, they're gonna send you questions. The topic you either choose to decline or you come on there. And for me, like this right here, this behavior, there is no excuse for it. I don't care if he's a rapper. Um, Amanda Seals did a little um, a little ditty where she was like, oh, you know, quoting his raps and you know how whatever the case may be and saying he is who he is. And when you know when you bring him there, you know who you bring in there, girl. Please, that does not that does not uh, like give reasoning or make an excuse for his behavior to this woman, Abby Phillips, doing her damn job. Ask you small questions. You could have said I declined to answer this. I'm not comfortable with this, but thank you for bringing me on, you know, whatever. But you had to do this and disrespect her. And we can continue to play it because it gets really, it gets really disrespectful. Really disrespectful. Yeah, what's up? What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? 
ain't me for this, the apology ain't for me to decide for Cassie. What what I what I think about it don't matter. <laughs> ain't do nothing to me. Cassie need to need to ask Cassie if oh. she accept the apology. I told you how I feel. I said what I said. I said what like why is he? I mad want to play a her? conversation <laughs> that you had on your podcast back in September with Mace. Mm -hmm. Listen. Yeah. When you had your record mm, deal, why did you take me to Biggie Smalls and not um, Bad Boy? Man, it's almost going to bring me to tears to say this. I just, being that I saw you as as such a good friend, I wanted to put you with somebody I knew with. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. A lot of people ask me that on Instagram, yeah, I knew man. Don't have me just out here crying and shit, it. man. I don't want to get emotional knew, in here, man. Instantly, I knew Biggie would, would do right by you. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, is there um, is there something known in the industry Can about how Diddy treated his artists? So I'm going to get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, yo, 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 like yeah. re this where like Rebecca really me like I saw Rebecca give a take on this, but it's actually and the fact I saw so many men like defending this because Cameron <laughs> gave some stupid excuse like they wanted to be with the mess, so I'm with the mess or whatever. Like, what the fuck? Like, what the actual fuck? Like, what 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 what's actually indictment here is that Diddy is a fucking someone who fucking is unprofessional, abuses women, treats them this way. You know what I mean? And he's like, <laughs> Like, you had to be like, nigga, what the fuck? Like, you just hear this woman ain't done shit to you. You accepted this appearance. Like, she ain't forcing it on you. Ain't nothing happening. You accepted to come here only to, like, disrespect her for what she asking him. Baseline questions like, hey, do you know this nigga to be violent like that? Is there a reason why y'all didn't want to do business with Diddy? Um, How do you feel about it? And here you are. Oh, I'm taking this drink so I could go get some cheeks. You're literally here. We're talking about a man who's been sexually and physically violent towards a woman. And you just here disrespecting this woman talking about, oh, exactly. you want to go get some cheeks. Like, what a fucking exactly. dickhead. That, that's, it's, it's, oh, I can yeah, no, that's, understood. Yeah, he, yeah that's John was what telling he said. To, to, to pay attention. That's what he said. He literally, this, that was my take on it. And like you said, Olay, so many men were literally jumping into my DMs. People that I know, people that I've that I'm close with and they were saying but you gotta is that really the take you want to go with it the take I do want to go with it is that this man was invited onto CNN which again CNN needs to stop with these rappers I and really stuff like that and bring thing, it, to bring them on there however they asked you to come on you knew the topic you get on here you start to answer the questions you act like it's problematic to have this conversation yet on your platform you had this conversation you you brought this up and you go on cnn and then you're told you, you this woman had nothing she's doing her job come on there and do your job right you take a sex a sex stimulant talking about a man who's abusive disrespectful to women <laughs> all of the things you take a sex stimulant and then you um, um proceed to talk about getting cheeks disrespecting this woman on literally her show her platform on cnn and you're disrespecting the whole interview cameron would never allow somebody to go to his stuff period and get and on there like that. and start <laughs> behaving like that on his stuff he would literally get a bin get the fuck off my he show really and I, it would have been a whole thing I like don't come on my stuff and disrespect my show so cameron's excuse after this whole thing um was oh you know like they asking me about diddy and i'm like what the hell don't don't ask me about diddy like it's mace doing they don't even know that mace be out here feeding the kids no he was something like you know talking to kids every day that kind of thing they don't know mace is doing good in the community here's the thing they don't know because you didn't say it in that interview you could have said you I know what mace is somebody that made it out and he uh, was attacked by diddy in some way and that's what reform. he was and that's what and he was asking him about exactly right. you could have said mace made it out and here's what mace is doing for the community i think that we should focus on uh -huh. while diddy did do a lot of bad things to people mace was one of the ones that made it out out. Mace was the one of the ones that walked away and decided to do better from that. It would have been that, but you went around and you're making an excuse for disrespecting that lady. You could have said that in the interview. Have there some decorum because no you wouldn't let no nobody do that on your platform. Yeah, I agree that there was no excuse for his behavior. However, I do believe that CNN, as you said, Rebecca, should not be looking at black people as a monolith, as a one size fits all, as this is the type of person I want to have this type of conversation with. We should look at his history just over the past few months and saying things like, oh, y'all can't cancel me. Y'all can't cancel me. He talks about women in a certain way. He talks about gay people in a certain way. They, they, there's a whole culture of people that he will not lose based on this character that he's presenting. Not one person. 
is not going to, that loves Cam is not going to listen to Cam because this happened. So I believe that this Fair. was just really a bad uh, casting when it comes to C on CNN. I'm really sorry that this happened to her. Like, especially being that she's, you know, really trying to address a serious issue. This was I, not the person, I believe, they I actually think this right here yet. is not about black people, and this is about hip-hop. Let me explain why Cameron is actually dead fucking wrong. The actual larger indictment is that this kind of fucking abuse is rampant and acceptable in hip-hop culture. Like, that is actually... Mm what is really like at issue here, right? Is that you niggas know what the fuck Diddy is like. You niggas have known when your fucking greats and your icons abuse women and you go on about it and that misogyny war and degradation and lack of respect for women, especially namely black women is commonplace in the hip hop community. That's the real serious fucking indictment. So it's fucking crazy that at a time when someone, your one of your icons is literally in four fucking K, like, doing this, recognizing this, and you as somebody who is in that community, as somebody who is a respected and why and notable rapper has an opportunity to say no seriously, to take it seriously, to show that you you believe in something different or to say to to reflect, to be a, spoke per a spokesperson for a different perspective in the hip-hop community, you decide to demonstrate exactly how shit like this comes to be because you niggas don't have no fucking respect for women. That's what that is. So no, it ain't just ain't about CNN looking for no black man but to be a monolith. This has everything to do with these niggas being jackasses in this ways let me tell you it really there's a lack of respect i've never the level of sexism that i see from this like side of the verse like the side of the hip-hop verse the content creator verse the ones that they're with them is in fucking insane like the way they deal with women like i it's incredible to me you want to talk to a man think, like that and that's what I want to start to say this too. Whenever women, and I notice as a woman who is like, does this stuff professionally, everybody feels like they get to litigate how the woman responded or how she deals with it. And I hate the idea that you only get a fucking stamp of approval if you quietly and politely and Olivia Pope like take disrespect, right? Like if this woman, all, men don't put up with shit like this. Men be on their shows, disrespecting their guests, throwing people off, doing whatever. And he's kind of what it is. Same way Cameron could bring his ass here on CNN and act a plum fucking fool. But this woman got to sit here and like politely, Olay. politely keep going. These niggas if I are may, out of pocket. She should have threw Olay, his black ass off that fucking show. Proceed, Olay, I'm sorry, friend. I, I totally <laughs> agree with everything that you said. My only point is in this era right now where people are paying attention to how you behave, how you present, like what you represent. He has said, I don't care about what y'all think. I am going to act an ass. This is what my platform is going to be. That's all I'm saying is he said, yo, he's already told us he don't care. He's already told us I'm going to say the things that, and y'all can't cancel me because this is who I am. This is the brand that I've, I've branded myself as, and I'm not changing. This is no. what he said. And, that's and I'm not talking about point. recently. I'm talking about recently actually saying y'all yes. ain't going to change anything I want to say. If I want to say gay people this, if I want to say that's bitch, okay. part of me, that's that, okay. That's what CNN I'm didn't say, and CNN didn't, the Abby Phillips did not tell him not to feel that way, yeah. not to say that, none of it. So he brought that energy. And first of all, Cameron, allegedly, even with who he was dating, right, formerly, has um, history that is abusive himself. So just coming on, when we're talking about an abusive man, and then you come on and you're disrespecting a woman uh, and mm -hmm. acting as if she, like, this is the type of, don't, don't, don't get on her with that energy. Because if it wasn't something that he didn't care about, he wouldn't even bring it up on his own platform. Again, mm -hmm. you can decline to answer. There are ways to do that. And you or can like don't you don't have to interview. He didn't, he I'm didn't literally say it. I don't have to go this shit every day. Woman. Here's what's important. This man wanted to do that. He got the request and he made a decision that he was going to come there. He is like that with her from beginning to end. This woman is not asking him anything that requires him to decline to answer or anything like that. He brought his ass up there to fucking do that. He consciously decided he was going to go on CNN and be it fucking should. disrespectful and da da da. And the fact that that's even fucking okay is what's crazy. Because this if the roles were reversed, though. yeah. No, this is my ahead. point that I said way early in this episode that I'm a, I'm worried that talking about domestic violence is going to turn into this like reality televisation mm. type you know aspect to it because why the fuck we living in Boondocks episodes? 
This is just so silly right. to me. The fact it's that ridiculous. you invited this nigga is crazy. The fact that mm-hmm. this nigga decided to go on and be an ass is crazy. Like, this is just so unserious. No, what, and this what is what to I'm me just... was actually sad. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah, sad I, I, to me is not even that. It's sad that you invited this nigga. It's sad that niggas decide to represent themselves this way. Like, people should be able to think that niggas, that, 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 like, pillars or notable people in the hip-hop community should be able to come discuss shit that's happening with niggas they have known and worked with or, or worked with for years like you should be able to it to me it's a dangerous what's actually unfortunate is for a nigga to act a way that makes it not seem like you know what you wrong to ever think that nigga could have had something intelligent to say like is that the message you want to say but if you're gonna act like it look <laughs> i'm just saying that everybody yo a lot of these a lot we have to leave some of them behind like at this point that, <laughs> that's just yeah. what it is you just you gotta kick them out the car. <laughs> Everybody can't go. You know what I'm saying? You can't put these this this certain sector. They are dangerous not only to women but to men, to their children, to everything, to everything that we trying to do, change, address. They don't care. There's no amount of sense. That's gonna get through to him. It isn't. I, I would it, love to think that he's a but he's, and he's, he's so good. Right. He's right, soaking so in misogyny. For me, I, for me, for me, as an educator, like it's hard for me to accept people like need to be left behind. Oh no, they gotta go. I, I, I understand why. <laughs> I understand that way, but like it's hard for me because I, I like my topic is educate. Like so, I think the issue that I have with this uh, particular thing is. Like he's he is agreeing that whatever is on the video is harmful, but I think something with men is we can't call the man an abuser, right? No. I think Why not? He's not like, agreeing. No, he's not. No, he isn't truly agreeing because, because he has he history does, of he being says abused it's egregious, But then he proceeds; it's like a dismissal. Like he knows that yeah, he yeah, has yeah, to like, say yeah, it, yeah, that it, much. It's like yeah, it's like this is bad, but like. I, like, it, you know what happens doing. when you think yeah. something is egregious? You know what kind of word egregious is? When you think some, when you say some shit is egregious and you believe it's egregious, nigga, you're not like, and no one ever has seriously been like, whoa, that's egregious. Nigga, don't ask me, but fucking none of that. I don't care about what I got to do with none. <laughs> that's, that's not when you think some shit is egregious. That's just when you know at the bare minimum you have to say that so that the niggas who are going to cape for you going to be like, you said it was wrong. You obviously were not particularly fucking moved by it. Like you, that's, no. that's what he went out his way to demonstrate is that I don't really give a fuck. And if you don't really give a fuck, you didn't think the shit was egregious for real, for real. Like, let's, that's, mm. that's what we got to keep it fucking real about. Like, nah, this nigga, well, you know what I don't like about Cameron? Culture, Every though. single time I see Cameron in real life, I think Cameron has one of the most underrated acting performances ever in paid in full. But the problem mm. is every time I see this nigga, I'd be like, is this you? You really want to be Rico really in real life? That's so crazy to me. Like, you know, really this, no, Cameron used to be my baby awful, daddy. Awful. Like, he used yeah. to be my baby daddy when I was younger. I was a kid, right? You know, and I remember him being in the drip, you know, the pink and all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Whatever that Miami song that he made, whatever it was. But he was so fine to me, right? That's how I seen it. Rappers are fine. It's my baby daddy. Then I started to see how he talks to women, how he treats women, um, the history mm-hmm. with him and, and his ex. Just in that. I'm like, this. are we really bringing him on to have these type of conversations? And That's then to him, for him to come on to have this type of conversation and really deliver in that way, he did have to he chose he to chose do that to. on purpose to. and yes, that's that's where my problem lies you didn't have to disrespect the uh, um the the um right. tv abby host phillips. The, the, i don't like that abby phillips we know already she's been having it tough since she got on the scene and then people disrespect her and she has to stand her having to s- sit there and listen to this man Talk about taking a sex stimulant because he about to go get cheeks later is so like don't disrespect my craft. Don't get on here and disrespect me as a drink. This ain't this ain't that. And it's exactly and by the way, shit like that lets you know why these niggas be getting charged in real life. Let me just say this. Not like not to do a camera on, but like Niggas will be so upset about a, a Me Too movement. Niggas will be up in arms about the idea of HR. They be so up in like up in arms about anything being inappropriate. But like how do you move through your professional life if to you it makes perfect sense to be on CNN with a fucking woman and say you want to go, you taking your your thing so you could go get some cheeks? Like, how do you believe like you niggas who move that. like this act in their private professional lives? Like, what do you say to your assistants? What do you think is normal for you to do in front of people that you work with? How do you deal with the women that run to get your drinks? You know what I'm it's saying? Like, you bought that at do. a gas station before this. Like, that's crazy. And had it in your pocket. No, that's his. 
That's his. That's his. That's oh, his thing. He used the moment as marketing for his product. But even so, it was still just a. He the didn't have to do that. There's that's nobody on CNN that that's thinking on about there to use that moment to disrespect that woman to promote yes. his his fuckery. Yes. Like yes. that that's is even, even more problematic. Disgusting. Like that's, that's even classic. he knew Ooh. he knew it would be a viral yeah, moment. If this, this will go viral, and then he gonna go get some cheeks. People gonna go get his sex stimulant, and at the end of it, to do that, yo, who booked me for this? Like, what? This is crazy, yo. Like, son, re- no, that's really it was tacky. It was tacky. <laughs> that's you the business they decided to go into. Hey, again, you behaving like that? That's very questionable. And he didn't have shame. to. That he yeah. could have said the exact same if he had any feelings of that. Like, why am I here? There was a respectful way to have that conversation. I agree with y'all. He chose that for real. He, every moment of that, he wanted to that disrespect. He wanted yeah. y'all to feel this way. And that's why I said, some of them, Pierre, I'm sorry. I try to talk to... I See, I be not wanting to use the B word and the N word on here, but I be trying to talk to niggas. And then at some point, yeah. I be like, yo, you niggas can go. Yeah. I'm good. I'm going to try to save the other ones that actually have a fighting chance. But some of y'all is just dead weight. And I know y'all don't want to hear that about our people, but some of them are. Everybody can't come. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I'm rooting for everybody black. I say that all the time. I'm rooting for everybody black. I'm not. Everybody doesn't act, <laughs> but everybody don't act in blackness. I'm everybody not. Definitely has to go. Whole, but I think a whole act, lot of everybody got to go. I'm rooting for everybody black, but a lot of people don't act in blackness. There's a lot of people that are acting you. in whiteness, and those are not black people to me. So well, when I say you. I'm rooting for everybody black, I want us all to win. I who want to win. So who want to win. Just the reason why mm-hmm. I will never be in nobody's politics. Don't have me in nobody's position of power because I'm efficient, but I'm it's going to be a one-man shop of listening. I'm telling you, niggas will, niggas will pop up missing in the middle of the night. Like, I would get rid of. <laughs> That's it. Thanos I, snap. You, the only thing I thought Thanos got wrong, I swear to God, I have a Thanos Funko Pop. My, my uh, boyfriend got me for Christmas because the only thing I think Thanos got wrong was being random like it's not random like don't randomly that no you need to if i can turn a switch hey, off, off, then then you the whole whole out here, I, who to snap. I would get niggas out of here if y'all immediately listen, if y'all ever heard my dream ooh, not only would i get niggas i thought this through not only would i get niggas out of here i'd get anyone who'd miss them out of here if you have too much allegiance to a nigga that gotta go you gotta go if you might miss the nigga that i got rid- anybody who i even feel my when you when you need to just wake up in my new world and just be happy for the assets you have don't ask nothing but these missing people if you say shit about a missing nigga you got to go You're done. <laughs> i understand harriet tubman every the, the more i live every day i wake up i understand harriet and i feel so bad for her because i know she's looking down being like you're still dealing with this we are auntie we are and i get it i'm so close i'm so close to just having the right i'm gonna make that our official wrap up the show yeah